Yes. Great. Well, then it's my pleasure to introduce Mohamed Alser um, with a talk about genome on a diet. Floor is yours. Good. All right. So thank you so much for the organizers for this opportunity and uh, inviting all of us here in this great place. Uh, the pointer doesn't work on the screen, so let's see how it works. All right, so I think Pierre did a great job introducing indexing metagenomics data. And here I'm going just to flash it very quickly. If you have very large data represented as FASTA file where you have reference genome, I would like to have for search for this little query and this large data, so you would get some pointers, try to index them, store them in a hash table, for example, or any use indexing techniques. And then you do the same thing for the query. And that's what we call indexing and seeding step. So the only difference is that those pointers will be stored in an index, and those would be used to query that index. The computational problem over here will be getting worse if we are dealing with pan genome or metagenomics data because we have a large number of those reference genomes. And this is the focus of the talk. So we observe that there is a plenty of room of improvement at the indexing level. So there are a lot of research work trying to focus on accelerating sequence alignment, for example. And for us, we try to focus on indexing and seeding. So there's a misconception saying that indexing is a pre-processing step. Why we should care about its performance, right? If it's done once and you do it only before running the computation itself, you store it somewhere and then rerun re the analysis every time. In fact, indexing and seeding accounts for about 10 to 27% of the total execution time of read mapping, but also 90% of metagenomic analysis, especially those who focus only on querying the cameras and don't perform sequence alignment, for example, as a Kraken crack, crack 2, for example. Index can be very large. It's about 10 to 21x larger than the index genome. Of course, this ratio varies based on the parameter you use, the camera length, and so on. But uh, we can discuss this in detail, how we come up with this number, and why we compare to two-bit encoded reference genome not four-bit encoded or character uh, or byte encoded data and so on. And if you are familiar with Minimap 2, when you calculate the minimizers themselves, you would do calculation for all overlapping k-mers. So although it sounds like minimizers, very few number of seeds, but you would calculate the hash value and all overlapping seeds before you decide which one to uh, include in the computation. And all of those reasons make indexing and seeding very expensive. And we believe that, we strongly believe actually, if we improve the indexing and seeding steps in any of the genomic analyses, we are going mm -hmm. to improve the execution time and not only that, but also the peak memory and the storage. And we are proposing specified genomics as a way to handle this. And what we do in Specified genomics, you have the genomic data, you would load it in typical genomics, you would load the index and the reference genome plus the fast few files, and then you start the analysis, right? But what we, we envision to have, you would load only the reference genome, you don't have index at all, and you would load the fast few file, and then you try to specify the reference genome and deal only with the specified version of the reference genome. And then you build the index in processing online while you are doing the analysis. You don't need to pre-process and build it, store it somewhere. How it works. All right, let's show an example first to show that this problem is really challenging. It's not like just specifying a sequence and then try to handle with it. Think about this text. We have another copy. They are exactly the same thing. Exact match, right? Now let's specify the first one, specify the second one, just remove every other character in both of them. And remember, they are exactly the same thing. So a specified version of both of them, still the same thing. Now, we would extract seeds from the specified version. We would do the same thing here, but we will ignore only the first character. Why we do that? We try to, to mimic the effect of sequencing machine because they randomly subsample our genome. So we don't have any guarantee where the read or the query would start from. 
So imagine it start from here and they're still exactly the same except only the first character. Now we sparsify this version and we extract the k-mers as usual. Unfortunately, no single exact match. They are still exactly the same thing. So specifying genomics is a challenging problem. And what we did to solve that problem, we proposed genome on diet. It's a five-step framework. Why I said framework and not a tool, because we envisioned this as each of them individual tool that you could use it to do whatever application you would like. So we show how we do read mapping using this, how we do a containment search, and how we do metagenomic classification. All right, what is the first step? Compressed indexing. So what we do, we get a pattern from the user. That is a binary pattern. One represent keep, zero remove those characters. And we apply that pattern to the reference genome. We got the shortened, shortened version of the reference genome based on this. So one keep this delete and so on. And then we operate over the pattern genome version. And we got the seed. Now we would expect to do the same thing with the read or the query, but due to the problem we just mentioned, we cannot do that. So introduce the second mm -hmm. step, which called pattern alignment. And what we do, we try to apply the pattern from the first character and do the same thing, get the new version of the query and then extract the seed. And then use those seeds to query the index that we initialize in the first step. Remember everything on the fly. We are not storing the index yet. So we build it while we do the analysis. And then we try to query those. We got one occurrence collectively for everything, for all the seeds, they happen, appear only once in the index. Now we shift by ourselves the pattern and we start applying it at the second character, not the first. I would repeat the same thing. And we got those seeds, we query them in the index that we have already, and we got 92 occurrences. Now, what does this telling us? It's simply telling us if we apply the pattern starting from the second character, it's more correct because we start to get more matches compared to the index. So it seems we are applying the pattern at the correct location. And from that, we infer that the alignment index is one, which represents the location where we should start applying the pattern. And by that, we solved the problem that we mentioned. Now, of course, I will get a lot of question. How many times do I need to repeat this, right? So I start shifting by one location. How about two locations, three locations, four locations, right? So it all depends on the pattern that the user specified. So since this is one zero, one zero, one zero, the minimum repeating pattern is only one zero, right? So that's why I'm trying only the first location and the second location. Everything else, it's exactly the same thing. So I don't need to iterate multiple times, right? But if the pattern is different, of course, that's going to increase the number of iteration. Now, after inferring the alignment index value, we use it as usual. We extract the seeds from the specified version, and we use that from now on. Now, in read mapping setup, you would have a step like seed chaining, for example, try to identify the mapping location before you perform a base level alignment, right? So for us, the seeds, remember, they are already sparsified. So there are portion of the bases in the seed removed, right? So we cannot do straightforward seed chaining. We cannot link these seeds, seeds together. So what we propose a location voting step where we have the query here on the reference genome, think about chromosome one and two. We got k-mers, those are sparsified k-mers still, and we try to match them with the reference genome. We got a few matches here and there, right? And we said, if a location has large number or the largest number of seed matches, then probably this is the correct mapping location. Of course, nothing ideal as in life. So for example, we got another location where we have similar number of matches, but maybe not optimal, not as large as this number, but maybe reduced by one, by two. So we consider it as a secondary alignment. And if we got another portion, or another piece of the read covered by other matches. So we consider that as supplementary alignment. And that's exactly what we do in Minimap 2. How many of you are familiar with Minimap 2, by the way? Oh, perfect. Everyone, you make my life easy. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Yeah. So minimap to the state of the art read mapper by Hingley. And uh, I think until now it's the state of the art, at least for long reads. So maybe for short reads, not the best, but so far it's the best for long reads. All right. And this is how we detect the correct mapping location to solve the issue with chaining the uh, specified seeds. And the, the, the last step is to perform sequence alignment. And we adapt that from the recent implementation from Intel guys presented by this paper, which is ADX acceleration of the original algorithm by Suzuki and Kasahara. And with that, we perform full read mapper and we um, uh, demonstrate the correctness, the accuracy, the optimality, and the benefit in terms of computation um, uh, of genome and diet as a read mapper. And we implement it on top of Minimap2 again. So if you are familiar with the source code of this tool, you will find everything uh, very familiar to you. There are some other optimization that we perform. Some, for example, ABX acceleration of seeding step, how you collect those minimizers. And until now, surprisingly, it's done sequentially in Minimap2. So you collect all those overlapping seeds, you calculate all the hashes, hash values for them, and then you decide which one has the minimum hash value, and then you keep it in the index. And all of this done sequentially. So we did AVX acceleration for that and some other optimization, maybe I can skip. And now back to the results. In terms of um, numbers compared to Minimap2, what is more important is 2x smaller memory footprint because now the index is smaller plus um, the, the index 2x is smaller, so you can store it. It's up to you. If you don't want, you can run on the fly. You don't really need to pre-compute any of those index data structure. The speed up really varies, uh, depends on the data you are using. We have some numbers for HiFi, Alumina, ONT data. We use the first three steps of genome and diet to perform containment search, so we don't need base alignment, for example. And we got significant speed up, especially the storage. So we use 100 gig of data, and we don't need to build the index for those 100 gig of reference genome. You load them direct to the memory, build the index for some of them, and then try to search them whether this data exists or does not exist. And that is compared to KMC3, which is state-of-the-art camera counting tool. We continue with the um, metagenomic classification and we compare to metal line. If you are familiar with metal line, it has KMC3 as first step to filter out reference genome and then it uses Minimap2 to do full alignment for metagenomic classification. And we replace both steps, Minimap2 and KMC3 with genome and diet with removing and enabling, disabling some of the steps in genome and diet to achieve that. All right, so this is another result where we vary the pattern that we use. One, one, ridiculous, it means one, right? So it means no specification at all. Here, removing one character every four character, removing one every three, removing one every two, removing two every three characters. And you can see how linear the scale in terms of execution time with the change of the pattern. This is different size of reference genome. We are using the execution time of just building the index and then query that index. This is the index size. You can see scale very well with the pattern that you are using. But there is one thing risky here when you specify the data, you are going to reduce the number of seeds collected. And that's going to affect the number of seed matches. So you need to lower down all your threshold in order to enable correctness. Depend, depending on your application. All right, hopefully I have more time. So I get a lot of questions. How is your method similar to space seed? And to visualize this, I have a cartoon example here. So I have a sequence, another sequence. I'm going to apply space seed just to give you a clear idea how it works. So you would collect seeds. You have a pattern from the user. <clears throat> You're going to apply that pattern to every single seed. That's what we call space seed. This is the result, right? Now let's do genome and diet. We got the exact same pattern from the user. 
We just repeat it as many times as it fits. You get the results. Now extract seeds and you can count how many you got. Only three seeds, here we got six, right? Now, the important advantages reduce execution time because we reduce the EC or the, the, the reference genome that we are going to operate everything on it. We reduce the peak memory because this is what we are going to store in the index. We reduce the number of seeds. And more important, if you check carefully each of those seeds, you will see that it has its own pattern. For example, this one, one, double zero, double one, triple zero, one. Here, one, zero, one, double zero, double one. And that was going to improve sensitivity. Over there, all of them covered by the exact same pattern. Now we did thorough analysis because that was an interesting question from the audience about the differences between space seed and genome and diet. Here we have uh, the common KMR rate. What does it mean? It means if you have two sequences, you extract all the KMRs from both and you try to match them. How many of them match out all the KMRs you extracted? And here we have very similar sequences to each other. So the number of matches very limited. And we use this pattern. Now let's see when we extract all the KMRs, this is what you got. When you use minimizers, this is what you will get. When you use spaced minimizer and genome on diet. What you could see that the common KMR rate is very similar to space seed with this pattern. Now let's change the pattern because with irregular pattern, you will see the advantage of human diet over the space seed. Now the all minimizer you extracted, you would expect to get the same performance because pattern cannot change the minimizers or the seeds. With the minimizer also the same thing, but with the spaced, you would get something lower. You can compare the blue dots with the blue dots over here. Now with the red, is a bit more higher because each of those seeds receive now its own pattern. And that's what's going to increase the number of matches between the two sequences. Remember, those two setups using very similar sequences. The last one use totally different sequences. They are dissimilar from each other. Now this is what you will get from extracting all overlapping seeds. So you have a lot of them mismatching each other. Now with the minimizer, always lower than the overlapping seeds because their number is less. And this is what you get from space seed. This is what you get from genome and diet. And that's going to tell you how many came are going to match out all extracted came. So in conclusion, genome and diet always provide the same or higher sensitivity compared to space seeding, but with the advantage of always being faster and more memory efficient. We have a, a lot of other results. I'm not going through them, but please check the paper for variant calling for execution time. And the source code is available. The uh, paper's still under review. And I'm just going to flash this as the last slide. This is the other work from our research group at ETH Zurich, where we are developing hardware accelerators at the storage level. So you don't need to move the data to the DRAM, to the CPU to perform the analysis. With the addition of very small minor hardware, you could perform the computation inside the SSD itself. If you are interested, you can check all of those paper and the venues. This is another paper summarizing everything from our group and other research group in the area of hardware accelerations, which is a different flavor, maybe. Some other papers. I'd like to thank all the co-authors. So this is our research group. If you are interested, check our newsletter where we summarize one year achievement of everything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mamas, for a very interesting talk. I'm sorry if I was fast. <laughs> uh, questions? Yeah. Try and error. That's the best approach, I would say. But that's a great question because I had a hard time to perform similar operation to Minimap 2, to KMC3. Every time I compare to other tools, I need to really 
configure all the parameters from scratch. So just sweep all of them with the camera size, with the window minimizer, the pattern itself, and so on. Because every time you'll see different number of hit ratio and miss ratio. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's an excellent question. That's, I think, one of the fundamental difference with Minimap 2. Minimap 2 applies a lot of heuristics to try to take advantage of the execution time to not perform sequence alignment. For us, we don't have other choice unless just perform full sequence alignment, end-to-end. -end. We don't do chaining. We don't do um, what they call uh, sparse dynamic programming where you fill the gaps with dynamic programming so we cannot take advantage of that which something great because we provide full accuracy in terms of alignment we don't stitch the alignment together Questions? yes right yes so i mean for when you have that, when you uh, you went it over minima, so you still get the same thing. So you don't have to do it. You don't do it. So we detect more variations. Basically, thank you. I think it's not mine. <laughs> we detect uh, the uh, higher number of variations, but also we have false positive, which is minimal. So we detect. Uh, more variations in terms of snaps, uh, deletions, insertions, and even very large structure variations, but we also increase false positive a bit by up to 5%, I would say. And then, I mean, also if I need to correct it from the beginning when you have the pattern and you need to shift it, but how would that work? Okay, if there's an insertion or deletion, and that kind of messes up in the middle, then, even if you push or back. Exactly. So, like a that's a great point, actually, because um, what Minimap 2 also relies on is detecting or uh, require dictating the exact matches to appear in the, uh, the in the beginning of the sequence. So it has to appear that exact match appearing in the very first 30 or 50 characters, right? And this is what we rely on. And for if there is insertion or deletion in the middle of the sequence, that can be considered as structure variation. So you still cover the the first portion where it's exactly matched, or there are some substitutions, and you still cover the second portion of the alignment by having supplementary alignments. So we could cover all type of variations. Okay, thanks. That's more for the discussion. Thank you so much.